Justified what is justified? Justified move faster. Better get moving. I give Jay-Z credit. That was a very shrewd move. He handled it coolly. He acted chilly. You're not supposed to play with that dude. You should not play with him. When Jay-Z made the decision to pursue MC Hammer, making a song and a video on Jay-Z, Mac Hammer took this as a diss and dropped the claim that he worships the devil. Furthermore, it is. It's nature. He interpreted it incorrectly. I was unaware that it was not up for discussion. I simply was. I had no idea what I had said was inappropriate. Jay-Z has always chosen his battles wisely, but when he attacked MC Hammer of all people, it seemed out of character. Kanye West's song, as rapped by Elena, I was shocked to hear that Hammer had been bankrupt. I'm more concentrated now, I guess. I lost $30 million, therefore I forked over another $30 million since, unlike Hammer, I am unaffected by $30 million. He was making reference to how Hammer, who had amassed a sizable fortune in the entertainment business, lost all of his money and went bankrupt. I give Jay-Z credit. That was a very shrewd move. He handled it coolly. He acted chilly. You're not supposed to play with that dude. You should not play with him. Hammer did not take that lightly and became so upset that he recorded and published the song Better Run, Run, Where? The MC accuses Jay of working with Satan both in real life and in the recording studio. Hammer then vanquished the Wicked One and had Jay submit to baptism. A conflict had therefore started. With Jay-Z's ostensibly innocent lyrics, the conflict got off to such a good start. Hammer ran out of money when he rapped. So, you see, I'm more concerned with the new song he collaborated on with Kanye West, which has me outraged. I lost 30 mil, he said as he continued to criticize the MC. I therefore used additional 30 codes. I can't be hurt by 30 million, unlike Hammer. While the jab appeared innocent enough, he was actually making fun of MC Hammer, who was notorious for wasting his riches prior to becoming a minister. Hammer, a reality TV producer, took exception to the reference and even went on a tweet rant against Jay-Z. Hammer tweeted, you wanted my attention, hash hellboy, you got it, appearing unwilling to wipe that dirt off his shoulder. He even went so far as to inform Jay of the precise date on which he would respond to him and reveal Jay-Z's true identity to the public. Twitter writing. The reply to Jay will be delivered on October 31st, he stated. Better Run Run, a new song and music video featuring Hammer as a punching, spitting CEO in a boardroom and Jay-Z as an obese, fleeing sinner, provided the response. The majority of the videos Hammer's Jay-Z impersonator's time was spent evading a man wearing a devil's mask, who is definitely the demon Jay-Z purportedly follows. At least until Hammer turns the horned devil one around, this continues. And he doused the Jay-Z stand alike in a lake like the fervently Christian priest he is. MC Hammer had forewarned Jay-Z that he was going to mess him up, as if to baptize him. Hammer did get some zingers in singing yo, Jay, I got a reasonable doubt, he raps, but the video was very square, full of outmoded dancing and a cheesy boardroom scene. And he sort of did in that bizarre video informing the world that the Jay-Z they all loved worshipped the devil. Would you answer the door if I knocked right away, or later? I don't wear your clothing. In both his tweets and his diss song, Hammer frequently implied that Jay was a sinner who needed to be baptized to free himself from the devil's hold. Hammer asserted that he pursued Jay-Z because the rapper used his name and lived in his time, but the truth is that he checked every individual who used his name in any manner he could. The born-again rapper claimed Jay-Z is a sinner and has a romantic relationship with the devil. Jay clarified his position in an interview with BBC's DJ Semtex, claiming that he didn't intend for the verses to be taken personally and that he was unaware that discussing Hammer or his financial status was prohibited. I didn't realize Hammer's financial situation wasn't up for discussion, he laughed, adding, I didn't know I was the first person to ever say that I'm not, am I? He said, sounding a little more serious, I think people believe me so much that they interpret what I say in a different way. At that point, it's almost like rap is no longer. Although he wasn't the only rapper to mention MC Hammer, he did it a few times more frequently than the others. Jay-Z continued, I say some beautiful things about him in the book I have coming out decoded, 
even after Hammer called him out in the interview. He smiled, that wasn't a cheap plug. He will feel humiliated. I made some pretty admiring remarks about him and how people viewed him. He said that it was what it was because Hammer had misinterpreted his lyrics although he himself had not even recognized he had done anything wrong. He made a satirical reference to Hammer's predicament, and Hammer didn't appreciate it at all. The Mac Hammer story has previously been extensively documented in everything from newspapers to legal documents to authentic Hollywood tales. And despite the fact that there has been much stated about the former rapper's rise to $33 million in bankruptcy filing, Fall Hammer, aka Stanley Kirk Burrell, thought there was still more to be revealed, which may have been the reason he worked as the co executive producer of tonight's Too Legit on VH1. The MC Hammer story is a self-portrait. For the MC to even join the production team, a lot of acceptance and development must have been required. The narrative for Hammer's own life focused on his rise from a street person to the top of the charts and the startling spending binge that followed. At one point, he remarks, it's just money. We might drown in it if we don't spend it. This has been the most common scenario for wealthy individuals, not just entertainers, who overspend without considering the cost. Romani Malko portrays Hammer in the film with the necessary vigor to make the frantic dancing sequences convincing. Additionally, he was excellent in the more subdued situations as a nice man who may have been defeated by his own noble ideals. However, Hammer, whose original recordings serve as the movie's soundtrack, particularly on the breakthrough you can't touch, since he even included a coda that shows him back with his roots in the church, his family intact, and his enthusiasm for life seemingly undiminished, this didn't get engaged in narrating his biography simply so he can end up where he has been. His downfall began in 1996, when MC Hammer and his wife Stephanie Burrell reportedly applied for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection, according to the SF Gate. Additionally, it was claimed at the time that Hammer had only $1 million in assets and had identified more than 200 creditors and obligations totaling at least $10 million. Chapter 11 Bankruptcy Permits Reorganization, typically involving a corporation or partnership, unlike Chapter 7 or Chapter 13 Bankruptcy, which are personal bankruptcy filings. As a result, a Chapter 11 debtor typically proposed a plan of reorganization to maintain its business and pay creditors over time in accordance with U.S. courts. As long as the debtors adhere to the reorganization plan that has been accepted on behalf of the creditors after a vote, this Chapter 11 also permits the debtors to keep custody of their assets. The fact that the MC was bankrupt as well as having unpaid taxes added to his already dire situation only served to make things worse. Everyone is wealthier than MC Hammer, so chill out, dude. Do you guys believe that MC Hammer was telling the truth when he claimed that Jay-Z worships the devil or was he merely making fun of Jay? Comment below and let us know. To be clear, this video was based on my beliefs and opinions and shouldn't be taken as reality. I'm done now.